Hi everyone. I wanted to make this special video and share my experience with um, ataxia and um, having it run in your family. Um, share you some experiences here and possibly how my ataxia seems different. Um, not just different in general, but how it seems different than compared to my other family members who supposedly have the same thing. Um, anyways, episodic ataxia type 2 is in the taxi I was diagnosed with based only on my symptoms of ataxia that seemed episodic in nature. My response to exozolamide, which is the medication used to treat some of the symptoms, and my positive family history of episodic ataxia. Um, anyways, it was a long journey into receiving a diagnosis for this, um, and I will give you insight as to why um, specifically. Um, I was seeing many doctors. They started to think it was other things. Um, many other things. And so I was tested for many unrelated conditions to ataxia. And I would see the neurologist and they claim my exams were normal, were okay. The only thing that they seen is that I had persistent nystagmus, which is related to ataxia to the begin with. But they just seemed to shrug that off and say my exams were completely normal, um, but did claim I have some nystagmus. Um, but I would walk heel to toe, I would do it pretty much perfectly. Um, in episodic ataxia type two, um, the symptoms range in some people from mild symptoms to severe symptoms and sometimes no symptoms at all. Um, so in my case, uh, when I would go see, in to see the neurologist, they were looking for the obvious signs of having ataxia, an abnormal MRI that showed shrinkage of the cerebellum, um, my inability to walk heel to toe and perform certain tasks, etc. Um, but when I would go in, I would show very little to no symptoms. So they claimed everything was okay at the time. Um, but I was suffering debilitating ep episodes of severe ataxia, dizziness, vomiting, um, incarnation imbalance, double vision. Um, the list goes on. But um, anyways, so... And they just got worse as I got older. Um, they became really debilitating and I was having them almost every day, pretty much every day. They were ongoing and they were happening every day and I was going to school and it, it was interfering with my activities in school and my schooling and my work and, you know, the whole nine yards. Um, I couldn't participate in gym class. I had fallen a couple times. Um... And physical activities like physical education, gym class would trigger me into having vomiting and dizzy, severe chronic dizziness that would, seemed ongoing. Um, but <clears throat> anyways, um, despite of all this, I, my other family members have an ataxia. Um that seemed episodic. There are variable differences between my ataxia and theirs, which made things difficult. Um, and they even had difficult time receiving a diagnosis despite of, you know, all the obvious signs that they had. <laughs> but my ataxia compared to theirs, and it runs in my family, is that According to my neurologist, mine seems primarily intermittent, means episodic. Um, 
but I do have interictal nystagmus, which is uh, when I move my eyes from side to side, they tend to jerk, um, which is associated with the condition ataxia. And I seem to have persistent tremors as well, um, can range from mild to, to severe depending on the day. Um, so most of the time it's subtle, but sometimes it acts up where it can be really um, noticeable. Um, so I have that all the time uh, and the nystagmus, but the ataxia itself, the imbalance, the incoordination, seems to be intermittent um, or episodic in nature. Um, so I would see the neurologist and um, up to date, I did show subtle signs of my ataxia um, when I went in, but um, I showed some coordination problems. But anyways, the neurologist claims my um, ataxia is mainly intermittent, um, episodic in nature, and I have a normal MRI scan, which again made things difficult to receive a diagnosis because my MRI didn't show shrinkage of the cerebellum, but I still had ataxia. And I had genetic testing that came back inconclusive, supposedly, uh, quite a time ago, um, which leaves questions unanswered um, as to what may be causing my ataxia, literally. Um, it was basically diagnosed based on observation and um, the symptoms I had and having a family history of it. Um, but, um, with my other family members, they did show evidence of having cerebellar atrophy on an MRI. Um, they had severe episodes of ataxia, but they also have a secondary persistent ataxia not just the episodes. Um, so despite of having episodes, they have an ataxia that's always present in between episodes. So um, that's the difference between mine and theirs, whereas theirs was actually literally confirmed through testing, um, and mine wasn't. So which leaves questions unanswered as to, oh, do we actually have the same type of episodic ataxia? Do I have a newer type of ataxia? Because why would my genetic testing come back okay and there's not, um, and they're showing evidence of it? Or maybe the type of ataxia or the gene mutation um, I have is not even known yet, therefore genetic testing for it is unavailable. Even though I do show signs of severe ataxia and I have been in a wheelchair because of it, um, because of my inability to walk um, and how often the episodes or severity um, happens depends on the individual. Um, because they can happen pretty much ongoing daily or they can happen like, let's say three or four times a month. It just depends on the person. But that's my experience as to why, um, how my ataxia is different. And in general, episodic ataxia is unusual uh, type of ataxia um, where Mostly, the symptoms range from no symptoms to mild symptoms to severe symptoms. It just fluctuates and goes up and down. Um, whereas most ataxias, they have stable and progressive symptoms. Mine doesn't work that way. So I may go from having severe symptoms to having mild symptoms. 
having no symptoms, having severe symptoms, you know, and it could be quite drastic at times too. Um, but um, that's the way my ataxia is. And I've been trying to keep it documented, take videos for my doctor, my neurologist, since my ataxia is so intermittent um, or episodic in nature. So he can take a look at my ataxia in more detail rather than just 15 minutes at a neurological examination. Um, so he could see how it is happening at home as well. Um, so I'm looking forward into my doctor eventually seeing the videos um, that I show my ataxia during versus um, not during an episode and all this. So he can get a better clue of how it happens. So that's uh, what I've been doing as well. And I advise anyone with episodic ataxia, if you can do that, uh, your best choice, your best option probably is to do that because episodic attacks is so hard to capture <laughs> um, or to, uh, how do I want to put it, uh, capture, <laughs> um, to be seen because it just fluctuates, it goes up and down. Like one moment you can have a severe episode, the next moment you show very little symptoms, which leads to a difficult diagnosis in episodic ataxia. So anyways, and that's what I wanted to say. I'll see you next time. Bye now.